Hey everyone, so Ben Shapiro was recently at Yale University doing a Q&A, a question and answer period, and uh, one of the people asked a question about the indigenous argument, talking about the Jews' uh, indigenous belonging in the land of Israel. Now, I think that the indigenous argument is, is a good perspective and something important to know, not necessarily the end all and be all of proofs of the Jewish people being uh, having claim to the land of Israel, but something uh, of consideration. I believe Ben uh, kind of lays out a similar idea when talking to the student. Check out this interaction. We'll, we'll dissect it a little bit more after he's finished. Hi, Ben. Thank you so much for coming to speak with us today. Um, my question is regarding the concept of indigeneity um, often being used or being indigenous to a particular land being used as claim often by the left um, for a people to have a legitimate reason to occupy a territory or a piece of land. Um, just this morning, I saw a post saying that today is actually not about if, uh, a post by a pro-Palestinian organization about how today is not actually about October 7th, 2023, but rather about the Nakba that happened in 1947. Um, I'm thinking, okay, if we're going to go back to 1947, then why not go back to, you know, the 7th, 7th century AD um, when it was conquered by Muslim conquest? Or if we even go back further, like 2,000 years ago when they were banished from this region. Um, and so I just wanted to hear your view on what you think the importance or how important it is to even have indigeneity as a concept when discussing um, ownership or claim to a land. Um, how should we understand it? Um, or if we do use it, how far back should we go? So, I mean, as you say, I think indigeneity tends to be much more of a, uh, it's in, there's sort of internal claims and there's external claims. So internal claims, you know, this is our land, this is the land that unifies us. Those are, those are common and those exist across the world and there's nothing new about that. As sort of an external justifying claim, indigeneity tends to be a very weak response. Uh, it, and it tends to be a response, by the way. It doesn't tend to be the initial claim. It's not you know, I ought to have this land because my great, 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 great grandfather had this land. And we tend to perceive that as a very weak claim. We ought to perceive that as as a very weak claim. It tends to be only used in the context of a of a counter historical claim, right? Somebody will say, "Well, I ought to have this land because my grandfather had this land," and somebody says, "Well, um, your your grandfather had my my he got it from my great grandfather, right?" And so it's it's more of a counter claim. The 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 sort of historic game playing here elides the central issue. Okay, so when I'm trying to simplify the Israeli-Palestinian issue, there's a very easy way to do this. Okay, the very easy way to do this is, would the world look better if it looked more like Israel, or would it look better if it looked more like, say, the West Bank under the Palestinian Authority and Fatah, or the Gaza Strip under Hamas? Okay, that's a very, very simple question, and it's a very easy question to answer, and nobody wants to answer it. So instead, there's obfuscation. Instead, you get people who are saying things like, well, you know, it's really about what happened in 1947, and it's really what happened, you know, uh, about uh, in, during, during the Ottoman Empire, and it's really what happened if you go all the way back to when this land was, was occupied by, you know, the, the Crusaders. I mean, like, you, you can do that all day long. You really can. And it doesn't actually prove anything or help anything particularly. I mean, again, if you want to go back originally, originally, according to the Bible, it was Canaanite. And if you want to go back to, you know, most of the archaeology, most of the archaeology in Israel dates to, you know, about the second century BC when it was Jewish. Uh, and, and so it, this is a particularly weak claim. And we all know it's a weak claim, by the way, because nobody at Yale is, is proposing to give up this, the beautiful university to the Native American tribes who originally possessed this land, obviously. Uh, so, yeah, th th that sort of claim is, is, I think, a misdirect. I think it's a red herring. And I think that the people who use it definitely know that it's, that it's a red herring in order to avoid the obvious, which is, Everyone in the world would prefer to, by the way, including Arabs, Israeli Arabs are perfectly happy living in Israel and none of them want to leave and live in the Gaza Strip or, or in the, uh, the areas of Judea and Samaria known as the West Bank. No, nobody wants that. Thank you. Right. So indigeneity is something that is an important part of the discussion. It shapes the perspective and gives context to, to certain aspects of the, uh, the conflicts currently going on in the Middle East. However, it's not the end all and be all. Really, the crux of the argument that is going on and, and, and the core that we really should be focused on is what ideology is going to be the superior ideology to spread across the world. Do we want the sense of freedom that is promoted by a secular Israel, or do we want the 
uh, Islamic extremism that is promoted not only by uh, those in the West Bank and, and the Gazans, the Hamas and, and Hezbollah, but uh, across the greater region as well. And I think we all, like Ben Shapiro pointed out, I think we all kind of know the answer to that, and that really should be the focus of the argument over here. Again, indigeneity, important, important part of the conversation, but not the end all and be all. When we're talking about who we want to win this war, we have to focus on the ideological battle that is going on, not only in the Middle East, but across the globe.